uh, and that failure consciousness. The behavior is bad. There's no one there to teach the science of what's going on. So what happens when we have excessive food type restriction or food measuring, calorie counting? Anyone ever do that? How many have calorie counted? Lots, yeah. I will never do that. That's a pain in the butt. And it's not going to work. My thing is simple. I see it, and I know the things that I'm allowed to eat that work for me. When I say allowed, that's my judgment on what I'm doing, you know, what I allow. Of course, you do what you want to do because we're all individuals here. And I'm not laying this on anyone. I don't judge anyone who doesn't do it because I could drop dead in 10 minutes being healthy, you know. Who knows? But the point I'm saying is no one really knows what good health is other than you feel good about what you're doing and you have some conscious mastership of your health to get there. So counting calories, how good is that? It's like having an alcoholic be the bartender. You know, you've got an addiction counting calories. Are you going to do a good job? No, you're not going to do it. It's too hard. So what do we want to do? Obviously, we all know this stuff. Interventions, good nutrition, which we talked about, physical activity. I don't care what you do. Go walk for a half hour a day. Try to sweat every day if you can. It's not a big deal. Just wear deodorant. <laughs> Behavior therapy. What is that? It's different for everybody. Everybody needs something different. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of my patients think of me as a coach. They'll come in maybe once every three months after they're on a program. And uh, they come in and they pretty much say, Doc, kick my ass, will you? I came in here to get my ass kicked because I was doing great and I didn't see you and I fell off. There are people that are health coaches, wellness coaches. They're great for stuff like this. They not only remind you of what you want to do, <coughs> but they take your goals and they set them up in a way that's easy for you. So what is cross training? You know, it's when people come and injured to me and they got bad knee, I go, do upper body for a while. They go, I got to exercise, I got to run, I got to get my run in every day. Or I'm going to get fat. No, it's not like that. You know, watch your food, do some cross training. Um, when I talk about cross training, I'm talking about do some aerobics and do some resistance training. What we want to do with that is the more exercise we do, the more we build these little carburetors in our cells. Christiana, what are they called? What are the little carburetors in our cells called? Mitochondria. Mitochondria. We can actually increase the number of these in our cells. The more we have, the more we burn. And if you don't do nothing, they die. They go, no use for me. Nothing going on in this system. Breathe hard if that's all you can do. I don't care. <laughs> so... You become healthy and a lean person most of the time by just doing these things. Eat the right foods that work for you. Do a little exercise. Do a little nutritional support. There's not one person in here that can get along in perfect health, whatever that means, optimum health, without supplementing what they have. Some of the people in here have done one of the blood tests I do. It's called SpectraCell. It checks for any deficiencies you have in vitamins, minerals, amino acids, which make up proteins, and antioxidant levels. If you want to come in and do it, you've got to get there before 3.30 because it gets, has to be picked up by FedEx that day. So, healthy lifestyle behaviors, what's that? I teach a lot of meditation. If I get that someone has a lot of issues that are blocking their, what I call, moving into a healthy consciousness, wellness consciousness. A lot of people can't get there because they got issues. Everybody's got their own. We all got issues, but some people have issues that block them from seeing what they can be and what they can do because they have low self-esteem or whether their father did this to them. I don't know what it is. Everybody's got their issues. I don't do issues, by the way. I refuse to do issues. Could I? Sure. Why don't I do issues? Anybody know? Doesn't work. 
Issues mean you're going back into a past that you created that's not real. We all have a past, but we're not there now. When I'm sitting here, I am present with everybody. I don't have a past. I do want to mention this. I don't want to belabor it because I know we've all, you know, read self-help books and done yoga and a lot of us in here have had spiritual teachers. And, you know, the basic teaching that I've come to believe that works for optimum health is being present. Because no matter how much pain you are in, no matter how overweight you think you are, no matter how bad you think you are, if you become present, it's blissful. You know, the spirit comes in and heals everything. Does that mean your pain goes away? No, it doesn't mean your pain goes away. It just means it's not going to have an impact on your life. So I don't go backwards. That's something I refuse to do. I get stuck in the future a little bit. I've been having a little panicky stuff with the economy. I'm sure everyone here has pretty much gone through a little bit of that. But the, the basis of my life is, you know, and I've probably told some of this before, when I grew up, we spent about five months every year in the Indiana sand dunes. We had a little tar paper shack on the beach. We lived in Chicago. It was an hour and a half drive to get out there where we took a train. And we had to hike through the woods and carry our food on our back. We had this little shack on the beach. There was no running water. There was no electricity. And I can guarantee you, there was nothing to do. So I had a very good imagination developing. And I became a little Indian boy half time. The other time, I was a little Greek god. Seriously, because I used to read all that stuff, but nothing to do but read. I used to get all my books for the next year, and I would read them during that time. So when I got back to school, I was ahead of everybody else, because I was out of school most of the time. And what I learned there is activity, imagination, and being present also. Because there was no future, there was no past. It was just me getting kicked out of bed in the morning by my mom going, go play, son, with nothing to do but play. So it was a great experience for me. And everyone who lived there, there was a little community, was very health conscious. I was very lucky to have that, extremely health conscious. We had people with a lot of different diseases that healed themselves just with nutrition. So I got from a very young age to see what optimal health can be like and be about. So when we diet, what happens to us? We lose fat, right? But we also lose the thing we need the most. We lose muscle. Please don't ever go on a diet. Please, I beg of you, don't diet. It doesn't work. So the scale is not the story of what's going on with you. You can be dropping tons of weight and getting sicker and sicker. So why do we do the body fat test? I coax everyone who comes into my office. I don't care if they come in for a hangnail. I want them on that bone density and get a body fat analysis. Wake them up. Let them know what they're doing themselves. So this shows the changes that the scale doesn't show. It shows the internal changes. It's an educational tool to understand the difference between fat mass, that's just the blubber we have, and free fat mass which is lean body mass, the muscle and bones. It helps us set good goals for ourselves, and it wakes people up to motivate them. People come in, even you know, very healthy people, like these people that have their cooks and all that stuff, um, in quite a bit of ignorance about what works. And I'm going to say it again. What works is keeping your insulin low. It's simple. Keep your insulin low. So the body composition test is one that shows how much of your body fat is free fat mass and how much is fat mass. It shows, you know, in your legs it shows how much, torso how much, your arms. You can look at any part of the body at all and tell what's going on. So body fat norms. In men we say about 8% to 18% range. What do you think I am? Any guesses? I'm a 12, yeah. I usually run about 12. I can get up, I can get up to about 18 if I if I get off track, which I've done for years on and off. Um, I've been good probably for the last I don't know two or three years now, 
but before that, Christmas time would come along and I'd fall into the trap. And then I 